everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the May 2021 Chemnitz Dialog live stream. Every month I pick a new inspiration photo and then dye a couple of colorways in a live stream inspired by that photo and then invite all of you to create your own yarn. And later in the video, I will show some of the yarn that you all created inspired by last month's inspiration this gorgeous blue jay. I live in Massachusetts and so we have a lot of blue jays around and recently I found one of the beautiful striped, I'm assuming it was a tail feather, it probably could have been wing, but I found one of the beautiful striped feathers in the yard and knew that I wanted to play with blues but maybe with the contrast and pops of black. And to do that we actually explored four different yarn bases in the live stream. We used Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. We used Wool to Die For's Zebra Fingering, which is 100% Peruvian Highland Wool and is a really interesting yarn base that I'll talk about more in a moment. We used Dyer Supplier's Marled Sock, which is 40% Peruvian Highland Wool, 40% Merino, and 20% Nylon. Finally, we used the Dyer Supplier Bouncy Aran Weight Yarn, which is 100% Superwash Merino. And I will have links and affiliate links to all of these yarn bases down in the video description if you would like to learn more. Sometimes I know exactly what colors I want to use, and other times I really like doing crude swatches to compare different colors to one another to help me figure out exactly what I would like to use. So we did a crude swatch with dry dye powder, looking at sapphire blue, alpine blue, baby blue eyes, Caribbean blue, frozen, sea spray. And then for some more neutral tones, I looked at sand dune, pecan brown, teddy bear brown, true black, platinum gray, and then twilight gray, which is more of a purple, which I totally forgot about. <laughs> that that color was so purplish, which goes to show why sometimes this exercise is worth doing instead of just looking at the uh, paint swatches that are on the website of a brand because different colors behave differently at different depths of shade. I finished this yarn by just adding more water and sort of moving things around. And I did add a little bit more color to add a little bit more balance to it, but I actually really enjoy the soft brown and blue vibes that we have on this yarn. In the end, I decided that I wanted to use Alpine Blue Frozen Sea Spray with maybe some Sand Dune, uh, Platinum Gray, and True Black as needed to sort of shift and bring in some neutrals. Dyer Supplier's Marled Sock is super fun because it's a four ply yarn and two plies are that Peruvian Highland wool, two are merino, and they're different colors. So that gives us this barber pole effect on the yarn base with when we started. Now the yarn was grayish to start with, but then we dyed this at a 1% depth of shade of Alpine Blue, which means we used one gram of dye on this skein. And the coverage is fairly even. There's still a little bit of tonal variation. I would call this a semi-solid versus a true solid. Uh, but because I set this up in a cool vat that I left overnight, that allowed us to get fairly even color coverage. Almost all of the yarn did absorb in about 24 hours, but the next morning I did add this to a pot uh, to just heat it so that way the rest of the color could absorb. But I think that if this yarn were superwash overnight, we probably would have absorbed most of those colors. The Alpine Blue is not very intense or saturated as blues go. The tone, I think, was fairly similar to Sapphire, maybe a little bit less bright, uh, but it is certainly less pigmented. And I am excited to play with this blue more. I think that this is the really one of the first times I've ever used it. And I am really happy that I went with this base. So in terms of blue jays, this base is a semi-solid. 
but we've got some of that striping feeling from the yarn itself. And this is something I really enjoy to do in these live streams is to pick a yarn base that I think fits the photo as much as I'm drawing colors from the photo. This was my first time dyeing Dyer Supplier's Bouncy Air and Weight yarn. And unfortunately, I've noticed a pretty big defect in one of my skeins. So this yarn is so round and smooth and bouncy and wonderful. And then I find this large section that has no twist. You can see the four plies in it, but this goes, like this is not a tiny section. It is completely stretched out, which I am extremely perplexed about. I've done dyed hundreds of skeins at this point, and this is the first time I've ever seen like a severe lack of twist in a really long section of yarn. So defects can certainly happen, and I think of the hundreds of skeins I've dyed from Dyer Supplier, this is the first huge defect that I've really found like this. But I did want to point it out because I think that it's important for me to share what I see and what I experience. Is this yarn still usable? Yeah, sure. I mean, you could either cut this portion out or even knit with it, I suppose. Uh, but if I were going to list it, I would list it at a severe, severe discount. Thankfully, the other four skeins seem to have no damage. Dying this colorway was really fun. I mixed up some, goodness, I don't remember exactly what mixtures, probably alpine blue with some black or gray, and added half of the skeins to that in a pot. There wasn't enough water to cover all the yarn, but I let the yarn soak up a lot of that blue. And then I poured another mixture, which I think was more frozen in black, but you should go back and look at the live stream to see exactly what that mixture was. But I poured that different brighter blue over the top. And I think that this gave some really beautiful, beautiful um, variation in the color without dyeing it twice. And so I thought that this was so fun. I mean, it just feels so feathery to me with the variation of color in there and also at the deeper end. Normally, the most number of skeins I can dip dye at a time is two, maybe three, but it's hard to keep them separate and move to get the kind of coverage that I like. And so this was a really nice way to get more coverage all in one pan. So I set the blue colors and then we allowed this yarn to cool and I used a foam brush to apply black, or really they're probably more deep gray, speckles over it. And these speckles are larger. Again, I was using the tip of a, or the corner really, of a foam brush to apply these instead of going with dry powder. And so one perk of doing this is that the colors didn't spread very far, but we're still getting those pops of the dark color that we have on the Blue Jay Tail Feather. I did dilute my 2% black stock solution before doing this. I think I could have just used the stock solution straight and these would have been a little bit darker, but I still really enjoy how this turned out. Overall, I did really enjoy this yarn base and I don't dye a lot of superwash worsted weight yarn, Aran weight yarn. So if this is something you would like to see me dye more of, please let me know down in the comments below. For me, the star of our show this month was the zebra fingering. This is a two-ply yarn where one of the plies is variegated white and black with some gray where it was spun together. And so this gives us a really unique base that also, before even adding the color, felt perfect for a blue jay with those vibrant black stripes because I knew that this yarn would bring that striping into it without me needing to add black at all. I really wanted to preserve some white in this colorway to sort of emulate that white tip at the end of the tail feathers. And to do this, we hand painted the yarn cold in a catering steam pan, but I actually added a zip tie resist around one end and left that white section out of the pot 
So that way I could attempt, and I think I successfully <laughs> was able to keep it as white as possible. For all of the blues, the main contributors were Alpine Blue and Frozen, but I mixed these colors with Pecan Brown, Platinum Gray, I think some True Black, and then some Sea Spray to bring in some greenish blues. We layered these colors in sections, and I did hold some back in case I needed to add some color to the other side, which right now I honestly can't remember if I flipped and added more color. A non-superwash yarn like this uh, absorbs color slower, so it's easier to get deeper color penetration through the yarn. But I am really, really happy with how this turned out. Anyway, I think that this turned out so fun, and I am really, really proud of it. This zebra type effect on the Bear Yarn Base is so fun, and Wool to Die For actually does offer this on a few different bases. I think certainly there's the Peruvian Highland Wool on Worsted. I think there's some that are 100% Superwash Merino. And I know there's an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon that all has this zebra effect. In case you prefer Superwash yarn, but still want to give this a shot. Finally, I didn't want to leave any dye behind. Now, I knew from the dyes that I mixed that I only started with three grams of our Alpine Blue, three grams of Frozen, one gram of Sea Spray, and I think one gram each of the Sand Dune and Platinum, which are both more pastel colors. I did have a random amount of True Black that I poured out to use up as well. And so all of those dye quantities that I just mentioned were used on the Zebra and the Bouncy Aran yarn that I already showed. So I'd already used a fair amount of the dye, but since I didn't mix these as stocks, I knew the quantity of dye I had, but not the volume. I knew that there was enough dye that it wouldn't overwhelm 200 grams of stroll. And so I added colors in various ways on one side, let it sit for a little bit to absorb part of the color, then flipped the yarn and added the rest to the other. With my tap water, and granted there was acid in the pan, a lot of colors will start striking pretty quickly. We saw that when we did the swatching at the beginning, and this created, <laughs> this might be one of my favorite colorways from the night. I absolutely, absolutely love how things combined. There is no question that this was a situation where I could have stopped without using up all of the color. However, sometimes when I'm dying, dealing with leftover dyes, my goal is to use all of the dye even if an intermediate step along the way is something I find really, really beautiful. So sometimes it's hard to keep going when I love where I am at an intermediate stage, but I think that this is absolutely spectacular. I think that one thing that makes it really easy to just go for it and dump color on yarn is when you know that they will blend together really, really beautifully. And so I knew that, you know, we would end something in with, with so I knew that we would end up with something in a bluish green kind of family if we just mixed everything all together and did a semi-solid. So I had a feeling that we would end up somewhere really fun. And now it is time for my favorite part of these live stream recaps. And it's time to look at some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same Blue Jay. Did you ignore the really pretty green background like I did? Or did you pull that into the mix? I know that some people were playing with resists to have high contrast represented by those stripes, plus a lot of other techniques. And it is so fun to see both how similar and how different people's colorways can be when we're all inspired by one photo. And so I think that this is my favorite part of these live streams. If you would like to participate in the Chemnitz Dialogue and be featured in a future live stream recap, uh, share the yarn that you dye inspired by the photo on Instagram using the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue. If you're dyeing yarn from an old inspiration photo, please just mention which month you were inspired by so I know. 
Uh, and you can also submit pictures by replying to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. I always link to that in the description of my live stream so you can easily find it. And it's usually pinned on the page while I'm accepting submissions. So thank you so much to everyone who participated. Please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. In addition to these dialogue live streams, I publish at least two new yarn dyeing videos every single week, and you really don't want to miss any of it. And to make sure that you don't miss a live stream, press that bell icon to turn on notifications. Uh, I do try to schedule the streams in advance and announce when it's going to take place, but sometimes things happen a little more last minute. So notifications are a great way that you can uh, know when it's happening so you can join the chat and sometimes help influence the direction I take on the yarn. I don't know if all of this yarn is still available in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, but if you're looking for ways to help support the content, going and buying some yarn that I've dyed in one of my videos is a really great way to help uh, support this content here. And there's hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn over in the shop. Links for everything are down in the description. Tons of information down there. It's always worth checking out. Blue, believe it or not, Blue is one of my favorite colors. I know I talk about purple all the time, but I have a huge appreciation for blues and something like this ooh, gets me really excited. So I know that I'm gonna wanna play with this color combination more in the future and I am really excited. Which one of these colorways is your favorite? Uh, please let me know down in the comments. It's really fun to see how what different people think of different types of colorways that we create. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.